ladies and gentlemen, we present the one, the only, the incomparable Hildegard. Hildegard in her heyday was as different from current pop singers as the supper clubs where she flourished were different from disco. As a child, I went wild when the band played. How I ran to the man when his hand swayed. Clarinets were a pet and a slide trombone. I thought simply divine. But today when they play... Like her songs, Hildegard oddly and successfully mixed the elementary and the elegant. Musical instrument that I call mine. I love a piano. I love a piano. I love to hear somebody play. Upon a piano, a grand piano. Oh, how it carries me away. Her fans remember. I was involved with the garment district, and every guy that was somebody in the garment district, the dress business, if he took you out on a nice date, it was to see Hildegard. That was the special. Whenever she performed, uh, and I'm talking about the Persian room, because I was there several times, because she, uh, first of all, was sold out. It was yeah. sold out. And the people used to want to get in, and they couldn't, and it was not cheap. She is what you call a treat. Yes, she's still here. She still comes on like a happy hurricane. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Or merci et bonsoir, mesdames and messieurs, we would say Milwaukee. Her most recent birthday, her 80th, was celebrated in company with an adoring Carnegie Hall audience. There, hear it. air suggests a chanteuse just off the Orient Express. But in fact, she grew up in New Holstein, Wisconsin. Have you noticed the way I talk? <laughs> well, I've always talked that way, very continental-like, all the time since I'm a young girl in Milwaukee. And one time, my nun, a, a nun teacher, a Dominican nun, said to me, Hildegard, can you talk without your hands? I said, I don't know, try it. She put my hands on my back and she said, now talk. So I talk with my shoulders. So I always had a continental flair with me. That is natural. Darling, je vous aime beaucoup. what to do. Vous avez completely stolen my heart. Her image is built on carefully chosen emblems of opulence, slinky gowns, long-stemmed roses, and the full-length gloves in which, startlingly, she plays the piano. Herman Tappé was my first designer, and he su suggested that I would just uh, put, he put gloves on the gowns that he designed for me. It was pink, pink gloves, green, green gloves, and it was, those are good gimmicks, and the hanky, well, where's my hanky? <laughs> Um, that, that just happened because Mother used to put uh, just pin hankies on my two sisters and me. We always with a safety pin, so that we'd always have a hanky. Darling, je vous aime beaucoup. I love you, yes. I Well, here's Life magazine, and they called me the first lady of television at that time. And the Hildegard, who never married, lives in a New York apartment lined with the signs of a bright and successful past. Well, here we have uh, President Truman, whom I loved very much. He was a dear friend. 
And, uh, Presidents, the, premiers, the and princes and, uh, have applauded her act. The King of Sweden requested her appearance at the Club Casanova in Paris. I came back and I sang the song and he was delighted with it. He just loved that song and he... So later on I gave him an album of mine, no card album. I sent it to Sweden for him. And he sent, then he t sent me this photograph. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. I welcome you to the informal Raleigh room. My, my, every table is taken with such charming people. The long trail began for Hildegard in the rutted roads of small-time vaudeville and proceeded to the broad avenues of radio and television. But she was happiest in the plush places where she played siren to the top hat trade. Place. It's an era that will never come back. It's just so sad because today it's it's all so different and there's so much crime and there's so much sophistication. It's too much sophistication. The, the charm of living, I think, is, is uh, passing away somehow. And yet you have still a great zest for life. Yes, I'm sitting here. I have quite a zest for it, haven't I? Yes, I do. I hit 80, so it's just a poof, it's just a number as far as I'm concerned. If you were to see Hildegard striding through her daily routines, you would see that she carries her age as lightly as her roses and hankies. Was there ever a time when you felt yourself tired, jaded, maybe it's time to stop? Never? And I have thought about it, and I thought, then what am I going to do, old girl? What she does is what she's always done. She puts on a show. I'll do the whole song for a change. Usually I only do a chorus or something. Uh-uh, the... does, does, does the song at twilight? Oh! That's right, come on. I was hoping you'd do that. Yes. Ah, oh, you can then thank you. At the Lenox Hill Neighborhood Association in New York, the piano was out of tune and the microphone out of repair. But Hildegard, the old trooper, convinced her audience that the good old days are here again. The last time I saw Paris, her trees were dressed for spring, and lovers walked beneath those trees, birds found songs to sing. I dodged the same old taxi cabs that I had dodged for years. The chorus of their squeaky horns was music to my ears. The last time I saw Paris, her heart was warm and gay. No matter how they change her, I'll remember 